Hey guys, this is Nick with Collective, and today I'm going to be going over the third tutorial, which teaches you how to set properties on cards. This is by far the most powerful feature of a card editor, and if you really want to become a master of the card editor, you have to learn how to do this. So what setting a property does is it remembers something and then comes back to it later. So you can do anything with that thing from before, and uh, it may sound relatively simple but this is actually what will allow you to go beyond um, cards which just do something immediately when you play them and then that's it which is uh, most cards that people think of when they're trying to be really creative um, today we're going to be making a card which copies the most recent thing that attacked and then puts it into play on your side of the battlefield all right, so to get started, we're gonna choose an action card from the blank cards. And I guess we can call this um, mirror. So let's try to find a mirror icon here. <laughs> okay, art is done and it is beautiful. So let's get started. Okay, so this is not gonna have a target. And again, the thing that this does is it just makes a copy of whatever the thing that last attacked was and puts it into play on your side of the battlefield. So I'm going to make a triggered ability. So this is, by the way, this is an additional ability because the play ability is what happens when you play the card and the additional abilities will handle other things. For example, this is a triggered ability and I'm not gonna give it a description because it doesn't need to show up on the text of the card. And then I'm going to make it so that it gets triggered no matter what zone it's in. So even if it's in your deck, it'll still get triggered. The thing with the trigger is going to be this card's game, which is the whole game. And the trigger is going to be unit attacks trigger. So when that trigger happens, we're going to define this card's property permanently, and we need to do it permanently because permanently means that it's defined even if the card moves between zones, which will definitely need to happen because the card moves from the hand into the resolving zone into, uh, the, into the discard pile when it gets played. Anyway, so we define its property permanently, and the property that we're going to find is a new one that we create right here. So we click Create New Property, and it's called Last Attacker. So the type of property is a card, because the thing that we're going to be storing is a card, specifically a unit, and it's, oops, and it's not going to be multiple units, it's just going to be whatever the last one was, so it'll always be one. So you click done, and then this property shows up here, last attacker. And then we're going to define it as this card's triggering object. So again, when you have a triggered ability, and you can see more about this in the fourth tutorial, but when you have a triggered ability, this triggering object property will appear over here. So we definitely want it to update continuously and then we want it to store what the triggering object was forever. So until nothing is how you do a statement which, uh, which is stored forever. So that's done, and now we're going to make it so that the playability actually makes a copy of that card. Now, here's the thing. Every card has a blueprint, which is the idea that the card originally was created from. So if you have five of the same card in your hand, they all came from the same blueprints. So what we actually want to do is create a card, and that card is going to be from the blueprint. So we're going to get something's property, which is this card's last attacker's blueprint. And that definitely updates continuously as well. So this is the create card step. You create this card, put it into play for this player. So you put it on the player's, uh, the player's battlefield who actually played the card. 
and you create one copy of it. And we're done. Now let's try it out. Oh, we need to change the text of the card. So a critical thing when you're making a card is to test it yourself. That's part of why the editor works the way it does is so that you can try things out and make sure there's no bugs. So one potential bug here I could see is maybe if you play the card but nothing is attacked yet, something will go wrong. So let's just try playing it on turn one before anything is attacked. Okay, game didn't crash. <laughs> That's good. And let's make another copy of it. And then let's play a unit so it can attack if the opponent doesn't play another unit. Okay. Okay, he's attacking as well. So the last thing that attacked was this food cart. So when I play this card, it should create a copy of food cart. Let's see what happens. It works. And there you go. So this is just kind of scratching the surface of what you can do with properties. If you want to see some somewhat advanced examples, you can look in the core set. I'm going to go over that in the fourth video. Some An example of a card which uses properties is Wide-Eyed Tourist. There's also Lisbo Nestmother is another one. But uh, if you want to make a really complicated card, which none of the cards in the core set really are, then you may have to have multiple properties, check them against each other. It can get very complicated fast, but if you want to make a really interesting and complicated card, it's a vital thing to learn. Anyway, thanks for watching, and have fun making those cards.